to get a feeling uh, how encryption uh, is working, let's have a closer look to some classical uh, encryption methods. For example, let's consider the mono-alphabetic substitutions. The idea here is, in a plain text, the characters, the letters, are substituted, encrypted, by characters of the same alphabet. Of course, the substitution scheme for encryption that can be chosen arbitrarily, but must be disclosed to all communication subscribers, otherwise the goal of an encryption cannot be reached. Here are some examples. For example, one can switch the alphabetic sequence. So instead of A, you write Z. And instead of Z, you write A. Instead of B, you write Y. And instead of Y, you write B. So switching the alphabetic order. Another idea for such a monopolitic, uh, mono alphabetic substitution is shifting the alphabet by a certain position. For example, by five positions. So A is replaced by B, C, D, E. B is replaced by F. So this is a shift. Another way is to encrypt with a start word. Uh, encryption with a start word is quite interesting. Uh, so let's consider it in more detail. The user selects the start word. And then the alphabet is appended to that start word. To have a unique uh, way to replace the letters, all multiple occurrence of characters need to be deleted. Better to understand uh, if we look to an example. Let's select as a start word the word Internet security. Then first step, and afterward we, end the, we append the alphabet uh, here afterward. But before we append the al alphabet, we have to delete all repeated occurrence. For example, we have here an E, here an E, here an E. So the uh, word which comes out from Internet security from the start word by uh, deleting all repeated occurrence of letters is this inter SCUY. And then we append the uh, remaining letters of the alphabet. So here we have our alphabet A, B, C, D. And now we have to describe how the single letters have to be encrypted. The idea, what we say, we start with the start word. And then the alphabet is appended, but we need to be careful. All letters that occur in the start word have to be deleted in the alphabet to have a unique way to, uh, to replace uh, letters. So, for example, B is replaced by N, F is replaced by S, K is replaced by B. You see, with the start word, it becomes more complex, uh, more difficult to understand the encryption method than by simply shifting the uh, alphabet by a certain amount of positions. If one wants to decrypt on the uh, side of the recipient, uh, if uh, the recipient wants to decrypt, then one has to go in a diverse direction. So L, for example, uh, in a cipher, it needs to be replaced by R. And if one does this consequently with all the letters in the message, one get back the recipient get back the message in a plain text. Perhaps we uh, try this out. Uh, perhaps you try this out by uh, taking a text and then uh, applying, this, uh, applying this encryption. I uh, want to consider now the encryption with a substitution cipher. So a substitution cipher whereby each letter is replaced by the letter following after X positions. The letter we take to replace, this is the encryption key, the shift by X positions in the alphabet. That means the encryption key is the shift number X. And if we look to an example, a uh, sender and receiver select the Latin alphabet and agree on the key uh, uh, 
x equal to 12. That means the alphabet is shifted by uh, 12 uh, positions. And if we look uh, for an encryption of the word, of the plain text, internet security, then what we have to do is simply to shift each letter by 12 positions in the uh, alphabet. That means the alphabet by 12 positions that's right uh, in the direction. So A is replaced by M, B by N, C by O, D by P, and so on. So with this key, shift by 12 positions, each letter of the alphabet is encrypted by a different letter. For decryption, we have to do the shift in the other direction. So now uh, the receiver can take the cipher text and can move, can in the alphabet, can replace each letter by the letter which uh, is in the alphabet uh, shifted by minus 12 positions. So if we look for the word internet security and apply the substitution cipher with the key x equal to 12, we get the text uh, here as a completely unreadable text. This is a cipher and nobody that do uh, uh, know how this was produced uh, has no chance uh, to uh, it has no chance to see how it was encrypted. The only thing what the attacker can do is to try to find out what is the encryption method. And when he comes to the idea that the substitution cipher, then he has to find the shift of the position. In this way, it's difficult for humans, but it's not difficult for computers, which can test it very much. In the context of the substitution cipher, it's important that six, the, the key x is not allowed to be a, a multiple of the size of the alphabet. Why? If you say, for example, you shift the alphabet with the 26 uh, letters by 26 positions, then you get the identical alphabet. And the cipher, although it was encrypted, is exactly the plain text. I think here it's a good way to understand what, uh, the idea, what is the idea of encryption. The idea of encryption is to hide the message to make it unreadable. If now an attacker, in the case of the substitution cyber, it is not difficult. If an uh, attacker wants to attack, wants to crack this, then he needs to find the key X. So the attacker knows uh, that the plain text, if an attacker knows that the plain text is encrypted by a substitution cipher, then he needs to find out the X. And of course, if he applies a brute force attack, uh, the maximum of tries, of, uh, tries he has to make is the number of alphabets. Number of alphabet minus one. That means he tries first shift one, then uh, he tries in a brute force method shift 2, shift 3, shift 4, and x equals to a number between 1 and 26. And so after, latest after a maximum of 26 tries, he uh, finds the, uh, he, he can crack the, uh, the encryption. Uh, the encryption, the, the experiment, the brute force attack consists is trying out whether the shift is 1, then shift all letters in the cipher by position 1, and if it's readable, then the cipher is uh, decrypted. If it's not, read uh, not readable, the attacker tries x equal 2, x equal 3, x equal 4, up to the moment the meaningful text occurs. Uh, a special case for the substitution cipher, which plays a role in history, is the Caesar cipher. This is a special case of the uh, substitution cipher with x equals 3. 
Uh, that means A is uh, all the letters are translated by three positions. And this plays a role uh, in the Roman Empire because in the Roman Empire the information whether a battle was, uh, whether there was a victim in the battle or whether it was a lost, was sent by uh, an encrypted uh, message uh, which were sent back to Rome and uh, the uh, encryption consists in that there was written, the, the, the message was written uh, on a band and this was moved around uh, such a stop and then every third, uh, exactly by move of three uh, positions, then the, uh, in Rome the people could uh, easily decrypt the message and were correspondingly happy or unhappy with the message they got from that battle. Although it's good to explain encryption, you see it's too simple for a modern application. Because in a brute force attack after 26, uh, uh, at least 26 tries, the, uh, the encryption is breaked. So a little bit more complicated uh, encryption are polyalphabetic ciphers. Uh, here the idea is to use several secret alphabets uh, uh, for encrypting the message. That means the same character in the plain text can be converted into the same character, can be converted into different letters in the ciphertext and vice versa. And this makes it much more difficult to find out uh, much more difficult to find out what kind of encryption method is applied. Here the number of shifts is selected for each character depending on the position in the word. For example, the position determines the shift. When we have the word, the, the message internet, then the I is in position 1 and it's shifted by 1. That means I is replaced by J. N is the second word, so N is shifted by position, uh, positioned by position by two positions, so it is shifted from N to P. T is, uh, is the third letter in the a word, so T is shifted by three uh, positions, and so on. In this way, it becomes more difficult to find out <coughs> uh, uh, what kind of shift is applied, because for each letter a different shift is performed. This, for example, is a result of that, uh, of that encryption method. A special case of that uh, is the Vaginaire, uh, uh, the Vaginaire encryption, which was developed by Blaise de Vaginaire in the 16th century. Here the idea is to choose a keyword, keyword let's take for example secure, and uh, in the following, uh, we use the positions of the letters in the alphabet E equal 0, B1. So E, there is no transition. And uh, now the idea of this visionary encryption is that each letter in the plain text is shifted according to the position of the corresponding key letter in the alphabet. To uh, understand this uh, more easily, let's consider the following example. We have the plain text, the message internet. The chosen keyword was the cure, and since this is not enough, we append the cure as uh, much uh, as long as we needed to have for all the text our system. And now we uh, compute the shifts. S is uh, the, uh, the chosen keyword gives the shifts that have to be formed on I. So S in the 18th position, so I has to be uh, shifted by 18th position, and this is A. N, the chosen keyword, we have E, 
below of n, e uh, is the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, letter in the alphabet, so our shift is 4. So n is shifted by 4 position, we get reach. T, uh, now we have t to shift t and we have to compute for how many positions we have to shift t. We can find out this looking to our chosen keyword. There is the letter C. Uh, C is, uh, has a position 2, so we have to shift by t, t by 2 position. And here you see in this way we get an, in this way we get an encrypted text. And as long as the length of the text is not a multiple of the key length, it is truncated as the end, so that we have to append to to append the uh, the uh, keywords uh, as much as uh, we need to get the uh, text uh, to be able to encrypt the text. Uh, but also the Vaginaire uh, cyber can be cracked. An idea here is that uh, one has to look to the plain text and to the character of the plain text. So if the plain text is not too short, if it's long enough, an attacker can determine the key length. Uh, the reason is that each nth character is encoded with the same replacement code. So if the keyword has the length n, then the uh, number of shifts uh, when we have n position, the n plus first position has exactly so many shifts like the first position in the text and so on. So finding out this, uh, then the attacker can also uh, find, uh, can crack the encryption method and can decode the cyber. Here one speaks uh, from a frequency analysis. So one has to test, one has first to find out what is the n, what is the length of the, of the keyword, of the chosen keyword. And then one with every n's position, then one can find, then one has a shift, an encryption by a certain fixed shift. Uh, and then one can find the shift length. There are Vaginaire variants with uh, so-called auto key and the idea here is that a chosen keyword consists of a secret keyword followed by the plain text. That means that the message themselves is used to determine the uh, shifts in the description. So let's uh, take our message, let's consist our message of the word internet security and let's take as a keyword the word secure and then we append the internet security. Auto key because the message itself determines the shifts. Only in the beginning to hide this uh, one needs the chosen keyword. So and then it's the same uh, method to find, determine the position of that letter and then uh, shift the letter of the plain text exactly by that uh, number. Then next letter, uh, find out the uh, position in the alphabet and shift the plain text letter exactly by uh, this way. The receiver can easily decrypt the first character, so with the keyword. The keyword is the key he has to exchange with the sender. And then the following characters he can take, he can take out from the decoded, uh, with the already decrypted text. So this is a Vaginaire encryption. Uh, let's, uh, at the end of this example, we already could see some ideas uh, which are used by crypt analysis. By crypt analysis, that means attackers try to perform the script analysis to get access to the plain text, to the text that was encrypted. And the crypt analytics, uh, analyticus, they find out whether there is a weakness 
in the encryption scheme whether it is easy for the attacker to attack such a code. So also the designer of such encryption uh, methods, they perform a crypt analysis to find out whether the encryption is strong enough. So uh, crypt analysis uh, is, is, uh, considers the question how an encryption can be cracked. Uh, there is a Kirchhoff's principle which says that the security of encryption method should be based solely on the, uh, on the secrecy of the key and not on the secrecy uh, of, the application, of the applied encryption procedure. Because there are not so many good ideas for such encryption procedures. A couple of ideas you saw already. But each of this method can be applied with a great variety of different keys. So Kirchhoff's principle says the encryption method, this can be published. Many people, particularly many crypto analysts, should have the chance to check whether the encryption method is really secure. But for application, the key is the secret and the key is the important thing. So the idea of this uh, Kirchhoff's recommendation is uh, to make encryption procedures public uh, in order to enable many experts to analyze and identify possible weaknesses as quickly as possible so that all people are warned, no, this encryption method is not strong enough. There is a possibility uh, to attack this. What are the attack opportunities against uh, encryption methods? not only against the encryption methods I presented, but in general. There is a tech opportunity uh, of brute force attacks. We already mentioned this, the systematic attempt, uh, the systematic uh, attempt with all possible keys to attempt whether it's possible to, uh, to uh, decrypt the cyber and to apply a key and to find the a meaningful uh, text, the message. Another attack opportunity are so-called dictionary attacks. Here the idea is to systematically attempt uh, to find out the key with frequently used or familiar keywords. We discussed such dictionary attacks already when we discussed about passwords. An important method to, uh, to, uh, of, of crypt analysis is statistical analysis. And the statistical analysis are based on some linguistic observations. So, for example, in a certain language, a number, the number of occurrence of single letters differs. So, for example, in English, uh, in English language, the e is very often e of very often occurs. The x occurs uh, um, much more seldom. And if one makes such an analysis, one can exactly say with well, this percentage uh, letter is uh, uh, E or letter L occurs in, in an English text. And this knowledge help to find out uh, the, what letter is encrypted with what other letter. So when in the cyber the word so the letter N, or no, let's take another one, uh, T, or, or the T is very often, um, uh, R is uh, occurring in most cases. Then it's very probably that R replaces E in the words because in the real language E is, uh, uh, often occurs. Another attack opportunity are chosen plain text. So if an attacker is able to get as well the plain text of an encryption as well the cyber in his hand, he can at the base of this plain text try to find out what is the encryption method and then apply this to other things. These are some ideas, we have no time to go into details, it's very interesting, so if you are interested you can find a lot of literature and interesting things about this, about some basic ideas for encryption 
as well as uh, the, um, the, the possibilities to uh, get information uh, which are helpful for decryption which are collected in an crypto analysis.